Hi there, everyone. So I'm going to talk to you tonight about three things that I learned about mobile UX the hard way by building it. Um, I was fortunate to have a mobile product that we built, totally web delivered, where we were able to get direct feedback from all users immediately after making it. This is what it felt like. <laughs> but first, who am I? My name is Josh Jeffries. I'm the lead UI engineer at College Board. But before that, I was the director of creative development at BusyEvent, a small startup in St. Louis. And that's where I built the app that we're going to talk about tonight, which was a mobile app that could be delivered on any platform. Um, it, it was used for conferences. So the great thing about using an app at a conference is you have about 10,000 people walking around with it. It's really easy to get user feedback. So first, the very first thing I learned is that when you use mobile, when you have a mobile app, you must do less. A lot less. When we originally proposed this, this was our concept. It's a lot of pages. It should have been three pages. We took way too much of a web mentality and thought we could cram in every feature we ever wanted. No one on a mobile platform wants every feature. Now, of course, our founders said, well, but we want to be cutting edge. We want to be cool. We want to beat the competition. So we have to have a lot of features. You know, kind of like that, right? After a couple of meetings, it became that. And then that. <laughs> And we thought this was going to be awesome. It does everything. No. When you are on a phone, you want to do one thing. Maybe you want a menu that lets you do a couple other things on the side. But you mostly want to do one thing, like that. That's easy to use. Everybody gets that. Good UX. <laughs> if your users have to think about what they're doing, if they have to stare at their phone and say, hmm, I'm not sure which button to press next, fail. You have failed. The second thing I learned, everybody know what these two things are? When you build your app and you deliver it over the web, you should build it just the same way you build a website from a long time ago. <laughs> so this is what we ended up with. This was our original design. It worked. It worked really well. It was cool. It had lots of buttons if you had an iPhone. Now, this is a while ago. This is iPhone 1. <laughs> Surprisingly, one or two people. Now, this was a long time ago. In the ancient days, two or three years ago, when iPhones were new and everyone still had Blackberries. And what we discovered is this design is terrible, technologically and UX-wise. It had a fixed width, so if your phone was a different shape, it didn't work. It had floats. Believe it or not, older phones don't like floats. Lots and lots of images, so if your connection was bad, and we were in a lot of conferences that were in basements 300 feet underground, bad connection. Uh, it took forever to load. Icons everywhere, because icons are cool, right? And very tiny words. For people who had screens that big, <coughs> tiny words kind of sucked. So if you want your uh, mobile web app to work on all phones, like all of them, not just the coolest, newest, droidiest, iPhoniest phones, or anything else, because there's a lot of devices out there, we don't know what they are. We don't know tomorrow what kind of new format is going to come out. That's what's great about web. Your web app can be delivered on a thing you don't know about yet. Tomorrow, someone can come up with some cool new whatever, and if you have a web app, it's on that device. No app store, no reconfiguring, no native anything. 
All you have to do is remember a few things. You use percentiles, because you don't know what size the screen is. You don't do floats. Some older th uh, devices don't like floats. Plus, they're unpredictable, because you may have a screen that's really, really wide or really, really narrow. So your plan to have everything line up on one side or the other goes to pieces. Use big text. It's always better to scroll than to be not able to read something. Try to avoid images whenever you can, because they take a long time to download. And put everything in the center. The trick with the center is every device has one. Some devices, believe it or not, we discovered when they go into web mode, decide that the tiny, tiny screen is actually that big. We saw people with phones walking around with blank screens after they'd loaded our app. What we discovered is they had to scroll to the side, like five or six page widths, to see the app. Because it just decided, well, oh, floats, we're gonna send them way over there. So this works on everything. This is the problem we ran into. Not everybody has the coolest phone. Some people have weird phones you don't have. You don't even, oh, you have one. I used to, yeah. Well, that guy, he's okay. Uh, everybody else though, you, you're sitting there, you're a cool developer, you've got your cool phone, you test it on your cool phone, and then somebody walks up with a five-year-old web browser you've never heard of phone that can barely do anything, and your app doesn't work. I have a Blackberry. My work makes me happy. So we redesigned our app. And we got this. Okay. It was a lot better. That worked on every phone, even really, really old Blackberries, even on Palms. We still had people walking around with Palm Pilots. Everybody remember those? <laughs> it had a lot less buttons. <laughs> it was more focused. This thing worked all the way back to HTML1. I'm not kidding you. If you had no style sheet at all, all you could see was links and bullet points and text, app still worked. Uh, no JavaScript script, still worked. Any screen size, still worked. Windows 3, still worked. <laughs> but, there's got to be a but here, right? We, we never did make it to TechCrunch. There's a thing three. Which of these cars would you trust more? Which of these cars do you think is going to work? <laughs> You're smart. Now, nothing about the visual appearance of these cars says anything about how they're going to work. But everyone wants to drive that one. You can build the coolest web app in the world. It can work perfectly. It can have amazing code. But if it doesn't look nice, no one will trust it. The more refined the visual experience is, the more refined the interactions are, the more it makes total sense, the more they trust you. Because it looks like you did hard work. It looks like you cared about what you were building. If you build something that isn't refined, people will assume that it's not well made. If it's really, really refined, they'll assume it is well made. And every time they run into something weird, they'll just assume that's their fault, not yours. So here's an actual mobile website. It looks like junk. Therefore, when I can't figure it out, it must be broken. On the other hand, Nike's website is really cool. So when I can't figure it out because it's really confusing, my fault. <laughs> this is actually how people think. So we went back and redesigned the whole thing. And look, now it's shiny. Just by making it a little cooler looking, suddenly everyone could use it. These are all the same buttons that you saw before. They're roughly the same like arrangement and order. But bizarrely, everyone started to understand it. Because it looked cool. It looked like it was done. It looked like people had really thought about what was going into it. And therefore, it became more usable. Because they were willing to give it more patience. Uh, we used HTML5, CSS3, progressive enhancement. 
So it still worked all the way back to HTML1, still worked if you had a horrible, terrible phone. But if you didn't, if you had a good phone, if you had a cool phone, it looked good. And believe it or not, that made a huge difference. Hooray! So those three things again, three things that I learned by actually walking around, watching people use our device, talking to them face to face, and very rapidly iterating in between each uh, rollout. You keep it focused. The more focused it is, the better it is. You keep it simple, and you build robust layouts that work under any circumstance. Because you don't know what's gonna happen with your, the device it's delivered on. And thing three, you make it shiny. Because if it looks like it was well made, people assume it is. Thank you.